Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schistler, your host in the program. And we've got an opportunity today to learn a little bit about some educational opportunities that are happening right here in Montgomery County. Uh, and I'm so pleased to be here with Brian Albert. Brian is with the Strong Law Firm, and he's working with the Chamber of Commerce. They're putting on a series of educational programs, Chamber University, and the one they're putting on a panel discussion so you would like to be an entrepreneur. Brian, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Rick. Well, I appreciate you coming on here and offering us a little bit of education and a little bit of information about what looks to be a wonderful, wonderful uh, education program that the Woodlands Chamber of Commerce is putting on. Give us a little background information on you and who you are and how you ended up on this panel. Sure. So, uh, so as you said, I'm a, I'm a shareholder with the Strong Firm in the Woodlands, Texas. Uh, our firm focuses on all forms of uh, both corporate transactional matters as well as litigation, estate planning, uh, essentially a full practice, you know, full service law practice. Um, I've got a, a pretty big background in corporate transactions, mergers and acquisitions, uh, lending and financing transactions. I do a lot within the startup and small to mid-sized business sector. Um, so, I, you know, it's just a great opportunity to work with the chamber. Uh, this panel in particular um, is, is the first of what we call our small business university. And so uh, the program as a whole is comprised of two different sections. There's the SBU 100 and the SBU 200. 100 obviously is, in, is more directed for new business people, people that are maybe just don't even know where to start. Um, and so those topics range from a lot of the really entry level questions. And then the 200 level is something we're starting this year for the first time, which takes a little bit of a deeper dive into uh, more specific uh, areas w within the different things that come up, such as legal, like myself, uh, banking, how to get financing, how to raise capital, um, whether you have to get certain tax advice, IT, security, um, really the whole gamut of anything a small business might run into. Um, and so this, this first one that we're doing, uh, like you said, so you want to be an entrepreneur, um, it's a panel discussion between myself, which well, I'm covering the legal side, and then we've got a banker, we've got a CPA, uh, we've got a representative from the uh, Lone Star Small Business Development Center, uh, and then we've got one other representative who uh, he's just got a wealth of knowledge in consulting and, and small business ownership and, and startup. So it's a really cool opportunity to hit on each of those topics. It'll be a great thing for anyone who, again, maybe doesn't even know where to start. They just have an idea and they think they might want to go in the direction of creating their own business. Sounds like a wonderful opportunity. It's what, a two-hour program, I understand? That's correct. Two -hour and program. when is it? Yeah, so it's actually next week. It's uh, Wednesday, January 30th. It's from 9 to 11 a.m., and it's hosted at the Woodlands Area Chamber of Commerce office in the Woodlands. Well, like I say, in two hours, if I'm thinking about going in business, to be able to tap into all those expertise, and I'm assuming there will be a Q&A kind of situation I can learn and, and decide for myself, at least from that perspective, if I want to be in business. That's exactly right. Yeah, J.J. Holly, the present CEO of the Woodlands Area Chamber, will be uh, moderating the panel. And, and really the idea is to give everyone on the panel just a chance to hit on big picture topics, th things that everyone needs to be considering if they want to go into business. Um, and, and then certainly there will be opportunity for some Q&A from the audience and, and we all will be available after the fact and, and hopefully be a resource for people into the future. You know, one of the things I do because I mentor and have been doing it right at almost 15 years, small businesses, primarily calling on my experiences and having multiple businesses I owned and built and sold, but I always talk to new clients. In fact, I onboarded a new client yesterday and one of the things on my checklist, if you will, is uh, engaging professionals, an attorney and an accountant. I make sure that they've done that. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if they won't do that, a lot of times folks think the cost or whatever, typically I won't stay with them because I, I sense that we have just too much opportunity for failure. If it's not today, it'll be several years from now. Uh, and anyway, and, and so from your perspective, why is it so important for someone in business, a startup or already out there operating business, to have a good attorney working with them? Mm -hmm. the, the big thing, honestly, is if you don't, you just run, you run the risk of making a mistake. And it's almost, almost always better to handle it at the front end, pay the cost, de deal with that grunt work to get off the ground and do it right, than to have to come on the back end of it when there's already a mistake, there's already liability out there. Um, more times than not, you, you're going to end up paying more uh, when, you, when you've got to clean up a mess rather than do the right things to prevent the mess to begin with. You know what I find, and I use your word mess, uh, it's when someone ends up in, a, in trouble legally in their business, I have found more times than not that it basically, uh, small business, shuts the business down because the owner it becomes 
so involved and in, because the concern and the money they'll end up spending hiring the attorney then That's exactly uh, right. just uh, potentially can ruin the business. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, have you experienced that? For sure. We, we see it a lot. I, I mean, it, like you said, it, it's the cost, but it's also just the disruption. Uh, if you're a small business, a lot of times you as the owner, founder, you are the business. And so when you've got to be taken away from running your business every single day to deal with working with attorneys, working with your CPA, whoever it is, um, it can really disrupt your flow. And so, you know, and especially when you're in a crisis situation, you know, if it's a litigation issue, it's always a crisis. Uh, no matter how big the dollar figure is, it matters to you, um, otherwise you wouldn't be in it. And, and so, yeah, it, it's it's a mess. Yeah, as I mentioned to you, I, one point in my career I practiced and I was a trial attorney and a lot of most of the work I did was representing businesses and I saw that from another angle and it was just sad to me. It is. People built up, in, in one case I had a second generation family business. They'd gotten to the second generation and uh, they ended up in a legal entanglement. In that case probably not their fault per se, but I think if they'd had good legal counsel just watching their business, they wouldn't have gotten there. Yeah. And uh, I mean it was a total, total disruption to the business, even the transition to the next generation was put on hold. Yeah, I, I like to tell clients, you know, think of us as an insurance policy, just like any other type of insurance, right? You have to pay it up front, you pay the premium, um, but that gives you that assurance and it helps avoid that off chance where there is a big, big situation like that. And that's really where we try to come in and save you. And if you do that all at the front end, you have a much better chance of surviving and getting through to the other side. Yeah, I think it's sage advice uh, and the same advice I would give my clients as well. Well, let me ask you, just uh, for the sake of carrying that out, what are some of the legal mistakes, particular mistakes you've seen, startups, particularly small businesses, people just getting rolling in their business, what are the kind of basic mistakes you see legally that they make uh, either by not coming to you or bringing you something that uh, was a mistake or and you have to clear it up? What are some of those? Yeah, I think the big thing is uh, people falling into the trap of thinking they're an expert, whether that's because of their own you know, self-belief or if it's relying on the internet or relying on a friend of a friend who did it or heard of someone. You know, it's, there's, there's a lot of information out there. We have this wonderful thing called the internet that can just give you any kind of answer that you want in, in a few clicks. The problem is it's unregulated, right? And, and so anyone out there can have a website that can purport to give you legal advice or, or business advice, um, and it might be wrong. You know, we, we have a website for our firm, and I could get on there and write a blog, and if I write something wrong, you're going to assume that I'm, it's right because I'm an attorney, it's a law firm website. Um, and so, you, you know, you get a lot of people that they, they read online, oh, well, I've got to do an LLC, and I can do it through LegalZoom, and it's $300, and I'm done. That's it. Don't have to do anything else, right? Um, and the answer is maybe, but maybe not. And more likely than not, it, it, that's not really the full thing. And so it's just, it's just not being willing to commit is really the mistake from a legal perspective. Commit to doing all that, to getting that insurance policy by having good counsel on the front end to, to avoid all those mistakes that might come in after. Well, and you know, one of the things I think is important, and I was trained this way in our family business, is a lawyer and an accountant, same thing, any professional, is just not there to do legal work in this case. Engage them as an advisor. Mm -hmm. In other words, once a year, twice a year, whatever, sit down and just talk about the business, not about a legal problem or drawing up some forms or whatever. Say, these are the businesses we're in, this is what we're doing, we're thinking about uh, bringing in a new product or entering into a new service or, or you know, what from a legal perspective do I need to be aware of and mm -hmm. I find that a compelling thing to do because I saw it work myself yeah. time and again so do you find yourself just doing some advising from a legal point 100%. of view? 100 percent I am I, I probably spend just as much time during my day working with clients advising on just general business concepts and, and things that I've seen through the legal scope um, but that really may, maybe don't have anything to do with a contract right um, we've seen how those things affect the legal side, what risks might come up. Um, and it's important because not every legal answer uh, is the same depending on what your situation, what your business is, what your goals are. So if I don't understand what your business, what direction you want to go, what your ultimate goals are, you know, are you trying to sell this off one day? Are you trying to make this an operational thing for 20 plus years where you're going to hand it off to your kids and they're going to work with you? That might change the answer uh, on how we structure your company, on how we write your contracts. Um, so you might sell widgets, 
And you might assume, well, the contract's the same no matter what. That's, that's not really true. And so if you don't have that business layer within the legal work, you're, you're really missing out. Well, and that makes a lot of sense. And again, I, I, I support 100% of what you say. We've got a couple minutes left. And the one thing I'd like to do, if we could, is just kind of quickly give, what are the basic legal needs for a startup business? Just the basic things. I'm going to start a business. Maybe I'm going to just be a, a sole proprietor or whatever. What are some of the basic things I need to look for, talk to an attorney about? Yeah, so, so really the, the first step that most people jump to is do I need to have a, an entity, a registered entity, um, you know, an LLC, a corporation, a limited partnership? Um, you know, usually the answer is going to be, yeah, it's probably not a bad idea. And most of the time that's because of that limited liability concept. For some people, it doesn't. you don't need it. If your business is, I'm going to, you know, hand make some jewelry, I'm going to sell it on Etsy. <coughs> Honestly, you probably don't need it because there's not a whole lot of risk involved in that. Um, but if you really want to expand, if you want to maybe franchise it, then you're probably going to have to have an entity at some point. So that's usually the baseline question we start with is, you know, what are you trying to do? Do you need to have a registered entity? Do we need to structure it? Um, and then from there, secondary thing is, do I need a license or a permit for what I'm doing? Some people s assume, well, I can just do whatever I want to do. Well, that's not true. Certain, certain industries are regulated by the state or by the federal government. Um, and so you might have to go through the process of applying for a permit or, or a specialty license to do what it is your services are. Um, and, and that is just paperwork. Uh, no one wants to get bogged down with it. But at the end of the day, a really well-written contract can save you a lot of headache later. Um, and even if it's one standard service agreement that you use for the rest of your, you know, your industry, your company's life, that, that's probably something that you want to have from the get-go so that every customer you ever have is on the same terms. Yeah, well, I think those are three good things that everybody should look at. Uh, to close out, remind us again the date, the time, where we can buy tickets, those kind of things about the program itself. Sure, so again, it's uh, Wednesday, January 30th from 9 to 11 a.m. at the Woodlands Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so you want to be an entrepreneur panel. Uh, it's the first of uh, 11 of the SBU uh, 100 level classes. Uh, you can register online through the Woodlands Area Chamber of Commerce website. Um, the tickets are $25 for chamber members, uh, $50 if you're a non-chamber member, and you can also actually sign up for the entire course ahead of time, and it saves you quite a bit of money if you want to buy the whole package, and then you get you get tickets to all, all the different events that we have going on. Yeah, and it appears there'll be a class, when I looked at the class uh, calendar, about every three weeks, three to four weeks. Yeah, yeah, it spreads out. So the, the, the next one coming up after that is actually going to be hosted by um, one of my good friends, Barry Blanton, uh, with Blanton Advisor, talking about business plan basics. Um, so that's going to be in February, and then they stretch out all the way. I think the last one ends in October. Right. Um, so it's it's a pretty nice spread. Uh, it's not a huge commitment, you know, because it's not all happening at once. Um, you really get a full year's worth of value going throughout the months. Well, it's a great opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're listening to the show, I encourage you. It's next week. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at woodlandschamber.org and get more information if you need it or contact the chamber by phone. Uh, great opportunity for you to meet what I call my educational requirement of all my uh, small business clients. So get engaged and uh, see if the Woodlands Chamber can provide you with that education you need. We're going to go to our final break of the day. And when I come back, I'm going to give you the onebestconsult.com tip of the week. So please stay with us. We'll be right back.